Greetings everybody, it's M0YKS and I'm back in the shack and tonight I'm just going to be messing around trying to work the ISS I've already had one shot at it using the uh, satellite mode on my FD847 and uh, tonight I'm going to try using a split band operation I think it might work out a little bit better I seem to be getting a little bit of a uh, heterodyning signal when I tried it last time so hopefully this will be uh, a little bit better, more successful and uh, I've also managed to get um, sat PC32 up and running, fully functioning with the Doppler correction uh, and the cat interface for the radio and also for the uh, antenna interface on the 232B. Uh, so everything's looking good and working well. However, for this particular pass, I'll just be using that software to control the antenna and I'll be manually adjusting the uh, shift on the radio. But uh, I'll show you how it all works and uh, see what you think to it. It's looking really good and I'm very pleased with the progress. So here we have the, uh, the layout of the, of the uh, tracking software, SAP PC32, which I managed to install on my computer. I'll do a more in-depth video on how it all works uh, this week. But right now, as you can see, I've got the uh, tracking effect and we've got the ISS coming into range. And uh, I've just got to get the frequencies set correct because the, uh, the new crossband repeater is not on here at the minute. So I'm going to sort that out. But I have been using the automatic tracking system for the Doppler correction which you can see um, the information in the bottom of the, the bar there so right now I'm just going to uh, activate my antenna rotator uh, and that will be just a simple click on this particular uh, bit of software just up there on that little button half for rotator so now that is activated the rotator and if I just take you down you'll see the rotator swinging into position uh, uh, lining itself up for the uh, ISS so the, uh, the interface you can see flashing is the, the 232 COM and uh, that's uh, powering the G5500 controller uh, hooked up from the computer which is running Windows 10. So that's the situation, we're in position now. And as you can see the footprint's just coming into range. I'm just going to uh, show you something else. If I click on, on this particular little feature, this will give me the ground track. So I've just locked the ground track on and we can see where it's going to go a little bit easier. Zoom out a little bit, it's knocked off. Over in this window here we've got the auto select. So at the minute we've got FO29 still in range. And uh, coming up in, um, according to this, right about now, 9 seconds, or oh, for 9 minutes it's going to last, sorry. It's going to be a 22 degrees pass from the ISS. So yeah, I've only installed this software this evening. So I'm a little bit rusty, so I'm going to see if I can work the bird, the ISS. Mike Zero, Yankee Kilo, Sierra, CQ, 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 ISS. Mexico Zero, Yankee Kilo Sierra, Italy Oscar 93, CQ ISS. Mexico Zero, Yankee Kilo Sierra, CQ ISS. Mike Zero, Yankee Kilo, Sierra, CQ. Mexico Zero, Yankee Kilo, Sierra, Italy Oscar 9, Trigger listening. Radio 
YZ4 Radio Yankee Bravo, Mike Zero, Yankee Kilo Sierra, Italy Oscar 93, listening. Mexico Zero, Yankee Kilo Sierra. Hotel Bravo 9, Sierra Tango Whiskey, Mike Zero, Yankee Kilo Sierra, Italy Oscar 9, 3, over. Mexico Zero, Yankee Kilo Sierra, CQISS. Mexico Zero, Yankee Kilo Sierra, listening. Mike Zero, Yankee, Kilo, Sierra, Italy Oscar 93, Charlie Uniform, listening. Mike Zero, Yankee, Kilo, Sierra, IO 93, listening. Mexico Zero, Yankee Kilo, Sierra. Mike Zero, Yankee Kilo, Sierra, listening. Mexico Zero, Yankee Kilo, Sierra, listening. Mike Zero, Yankee Kilo, Sierra, Italy Oscar 93, listening. Well, it's just about going out of range, that's it. It's, it has gone out of range, but yeah, I think that was a reasonable contact there. So yeah, I made a couple of mistakes with the software and had to revert to a bit of manual operation. I know what I did wrong. Yeah, I accidentally uh, left the program uh, open on the update, which uh, caused the satellite tracking to stop. Uh, once I closed the window, it started again, so I uh, switched to a little bit of manual. I'm just getting used to that SAT PC32. Obviously, it's the first time I've tried it. But uh, it's pretty good really, I'm quite uh, happy that I tried that different technique to work the ISS. So what I actually did there is I just set the radio up in uh, split mode. So I used uh, the uplink on the, on the, four three, on the uh, 145 band on VFOB and uh, the receive on VFOA using split. And I'll let you take a close look at the radio and see what I'm on about. So as you, as you can see we've got split on there, which is uh, making the uh, two bands, we've got the RX and the TX, so the transmitting side is on the right hand side which is 145990 and I've got the uh, CTSS tone set to 67 hertz. I'll probably try it on narrow band FM next time, it seemed to work but we'll see what it's like narrow. So I'll receive wise we've got 37.800, that's the middle uh, reception point of the crossband repeater and that's on VFOB. So we're going up on VFOA and coming down on VFOB. So that's how I've set that one up. I can obviously use the automatic satellite function on this particular radio, uh, which I've got uh, things there like a pre-programmed menu, but I just thought I'd try it out using a split mode rather than actual proper 
satellite mode, which uh, is what I normally operate on. Uh, I tried it yesterday, like I said, uh, and I found a little bit of harmonics coming through further down the band. That is what I thought, uh, slightly um, probably coming through with the antennas being so close together. So that's why I tried to do it like this, where we're, we're cancelling the, the receive whilst transmitting with the split mode, if you're following what I'm saying. So that's the FD847 set up, and that's how we, we did it just then. So what I've got there is the uh, the G, sorry, the uh, COM232B interface, which is connected to the control unit, which moves the antennas for me. And this is what I've been trying to connect up and uh, get into today, and it's uh, SAP PC32. Uh, I'm going to probably um, buy the registered license uh, because you've got to keep on putting in your location every time you start it up at the moment which is a bit uh, annoying but I do like the way that it controls the uh, rotator and they have got the, the cap interface working as well for the frequency so everything's looking quite good so it's worth probably getting the full uh, license for it and uh, there's a couple of other interesting features you can open up all your different um, information telling you the times of the next passes with all the uh, relevant information for the start and the finish and the elevation angles and the duration so that's quite handy and then you've got another control this side which you can uh, find out the order of the birds or the space station whatever you're looking at that's telling you when the next going to be in range so if I wanted to wait for the ISS it'd be coming up in 1 hour 21 minutes at a 52 degrees pass the next uh, reasonable option is XW2A with a 0 or 1 so there's not going to be much on that one so F 29 and so forth so yeah that's the situation with that one so it's um, working quite well uh, I've got it set up with a couple of USB the serial uh, latest chipset um, adapters and one's going into the back of the, uh, the, the COM232B for the antenna the other's going into the back of the FT847 so with it all set up, I can uh, quickly run through the uh, different preset um, satellites using the menu on the the, tra the tracking software, which will automatically change the frequency with the cat control. And like I say, when a uh, satellite is in range, we can uh, actually work uh, work the uh, frequency shift from the computer automatically now. And I'm just selecting a few different satellites just to show how it's working as I click through them all there. And uh, yeah, it's pretty good. I'm quite pleased with how I've got it working. It took a little bit of sussing out, uh, but it was reasonably easy in the end. And uh, what I actually did, I'll show you in a second, in case anybody's uh, interested. And uh, that's all the various, uh, one or two of the settings there. I won't bother go on, but that's just how, it, how it basically works. So to get this all working with my uh, interface, I basically uh, set it up with the setup this side here when I first started it up, which is uh, this particular menu. And on this menu you've got observer set up so you can put your coordinates uh, and uh, your locator and all the rest of it in there, store it. You've got um, rotor set up which is pretty straightforward. So in there we've got the GSG232 which is the interface system. You can cl click on that, you can search it. Uh, and then we've got um, some preset settings in there. I've got um, update in time intervals. We can set that. I've got mine set to 7 seconds, 5 degree position change and uh, your maximum elevation, I've set mine to 90 degrees even though it'll do 180 and uh, you store that, so that's how you set the rotor up, that's pretty straightforward and fairly easy providing you've got the driver in there and everything going ok close that down and then the next one which took a little bit of doing was the radio setup so what I ended up doing, uh, selecting radio number 1 which is Yesu the model came up, the FT847 and then the actual board rate, if I change that, I'll just show you the, the option. Click that to the board rate, and I've got mine set to 4800, uh, 4800. Uh, it was standard set for 9600, which is the one that everybody seems to think the 847 operates on. This particular model didn't, didn't like it, and I kept on getting uh, the TX, auto TX in kicking in every time I flipped the cat on. And I had that problem with the other uh, satellite uh, program softwares. And I'll try to set the cat up, but on this one, it seemed to be okay when I dropped it down to 4800. So that's how I got it working. That was a simple fix, going through a few different options. Got no uh, ticks in the RTS, DTR, uh, and I've got it selected on the satellite mode in that option there. Uh, and selected that to 6 for a COM port, which um, is the COM port which has got my radio on. So COM port number 6 is a radio, 
and for me the interface that was selected which I didn't mention that was COM port number three so you just select which COM port you want and obviously that's that so that's how that works uh, a few other options on the setup um, you've got the um, configuration you've got the options so you can automatically activate on the startup your rotor control your cat control auto selecting satellites you can have multiple satellites on the screen uh, you, auto, you can select sub audio tones for the CTSS uh, uplinks which I've, I'll have to pre-program some of them I should imagine and different zoom settings directional arrows for the birds and, and the space station which have a direction they're going in and a few other nice little bits and pieces so I won't say that I'm 100% savvy with it, I've only just uh, considering it tonight uh, so I like to give you it from a novice's point of view so that anybody thinking about putting this on the computer they know, they know what it's like from day one uh, like I say from a non-expert as it were so I've got it working nicely and like I say it's also controlling the radio nicely as well as the antennas so I'm just going to uh, suss out uh, I'll keep it all up to date with the, with the Keplerian elements I think I've one or two issues with that but I should imagine that's possibly a license issue so once you get by the license and you uh, pay for the registration fee you probably get all everything working 100% smoothly uh, from the updating and uh, saving all your favourites and all that kind of affair so at the moment I've got a few satellites selected uh, I've got for, uh, basically A to K that's the uh, menu whatever you click on, if you click on satellite A you've got FO29 if you click, so I'll click on that one just to, if I click on the ISS or let's see, let's try C C's XW2A so I'll click on that one and it automatically tunes the FT847 to that particular frequency which on this particular occasion supposedly is 436793 down 145850 up that's what it's showing on the radio and that's how it works so then what I can do then I can select the, the plus on the R for the rotator the plus on the C for the, the cat controller and the plus on the A for the auto satellite tracking so when that bird comes in range which is somewhere down here at the minute we'll just check out the ground footprint as well um, so it's, it's there it's going to go that way so that's obviously not going to be in range so I'll just pick another one go through a couple I don't think, I think possibly that one's <coughs> not too far away so that one is XW2A so it's changed the frequency now to 145677435031. I've got the same readout on the radio. If the the bird was in range, it would change the frequency. Well, it is changing it on the radio, I believe. I'll just have a quick look for you and see if you can see that. And that will probably conclude what I'm going to do for now. Yeah, so if you watch the frequency uh, display, you'll see it automatically adjusting down like it did just then. And that's just correcting itself for... Uh, when you're transmitting and receiving so you don't have to fiddle the VFO as much I did notice there's a slight uh, adjustment required uh, occasionally but it's pretty accurate so I was very pleased to be able to get straight into uh, I think it was one of the XW2 birds uh, with uh, the pre-programmed settings from the satellite tracking software SAT PC32 so it's just a case of getting my head into it now and uh, hopefully getting used to it so on that note, I'll uh, say seven free to everybody. Thanks for subscribing, commenting, liking and disliking. And uh, we hope to catch you again soon on another video. And hopefully I'll be live streaming sometime real soon. I was just a little bit busy this weekend. And I've been trying to get uh, all this uh, stuff working in the shack. So things are looking good. Got a bit more tweaking around to do. But you know, that's the fun of the hobby. So stay safe, stay healthy. And we'll catch up with you soon. This is M0YKS signing out. Catch you later.